The Chicago police superintendent is calling for tougher gun control regulations after a shooting at a park left 13 people injured. Investigators say a gunman with a military grade assault rifle fired randomly into the park during a pickup basketball game Thursday. One of those hurt is a three year old boy. And a Louisiana lawmaker, meantime, urging people to avoid Starbucks altogether after the company requested customers refrain from bringing guns to their coffee shops. Last week, CEO Howard Schultz said weapons should not be part of the Starbucks experience. Plus, the company that performs background checks for the government is again under scrutiny for giving the go-ahead for a security clearance to Navy Yard gunman Aaron Alexis. There are new reports that the company, known as USIS, is overwhelmed by the number of checks requested. USIS, though, says responsibility lies with the Office of Personnel. The renewed focus on guns and gun control is what we are talking about this half hour, and we want to know what you think. We'll be reading some of the thoughts that you've left on our Facebook fan page. In our newsroom right now, we have our legal analyst, Chris Tritico, news analyst, Mustafa Tamiz, and public policy analyst, Jackie Bally. So let's start with the Navy Yard shooting, guys. Do you think there needs to be a review of how these background checks are carried out? You know, the, I think that the, the end result of this was the Navy dropping the ball on, on taking away uh, this person's um, uh, clearance, uh, security clearance. He wasn't, uh, he shouldn't have had that clearance any longer, and he did, and that, I think it was a Navy problem. The, the question, then you have to look at uh, the overall question that never seems to go away is what do we do about weapons in America? You know, the Brady Bill, um, uh, Jackie Bauer, the Brady Bill, when it was passed and signed by Bill Clinton, I believe signed it, banned assault-type weapons for, t for a period of 10 years, and then that was allowed to expire, and the assault-type weapons are now being sold again. Is that the issue? I want to tell you that I do agree with you um, about the statement that they the definitely should have done better with their clearance and, and with their security checks. Well, if, I mean, if it's time the, to lose your clearance, take it away. Right. And that should happen. Right. And in, in <clears throat> that particular case, that young man was saying he's hearing voices. Right. There, were, there were a lot of issues there. Uh, the, ba the Brady Bill was very effective at the time that it was, it was brought forth. But, you know, a lot of the times that we're talking about gun control, again, we discussed this last week, you're, it's the innocent people, it's the people who are going to be getting a gun legally who are impacted. A lot of these people, when we're seeing the mass shootings, a lot of these, um, of the crime rate that we're seeing that's jumped up so much in Chicago, I mean, no one has a stricter gun control laws than Chicago, yet they have the highest rate and the highest number of incidents of gun control. Well, that's where Al Capone gun was from. They have to. <laughs> <laughs> my, point is, <laughs> my point is, if you're a criminal, all of these measures are not really going to impact them. It's going to impact those of us who are doing things legally. And what about that, Mustafa? You, know, you take, away the, take away the guns from the legal people, from the people who, you and I, who might want a weapon. It's not going to stop somebody who's going to break the law. Well, I, I was kind of envious, Jack. You said, I agree with you. I, I know. I've been, waiting for, <laughs> I've been waiting for that statement for a long time for me, but it doesn't seem to come. But look, the, the, the approach to this, the, we have to reconsider in a sense that we have 270 million guns in the United States. That's that, almost like 89%. I mean, if you had 100 people, 89 would have a gun. That's how many guns we have. We have more guns per capita than in Yemen. I mean, just think about that. Yemen is like almost a war zone. We have more guns than they do. And so if you, if you, if you come from the approach that says the way we get security is by having more and more guns, it's not, it's not going to be effective because there are going to be more accidents, there's going to be more shootings and these mass shootings. I mean, every, every week now you turn on the television, there's been mass shootings. Right, we me, have to begin to curb this. Let me go to Sally. When we come back, I want to talk about Starbucks. Now, I can't go to Starbucks because I don't speak the language, but I want to go to Sally <laughs> and she's monitoring the Facebook and Twitter accounts. Oh, Chris, to go. All right, <laughs> yes, we've got some folks commenting, of course, on this this morning right now in real time. Edgar says expanding background checks will cost more and slow things down. Chicago has proven that if you disarm the population, only thugs and killers will have them. And then Robin says it's not the guns that are out of control, it's the people. So a lot of people here agreeing with Jackie this morning. And, and, and that really seems to be, and this argument never seems to go away. Uh, it's, it's lasted longer than the, the debate over whether or not we're going to uh, extend the debt ceiling. And it's, it's one that I don't think is gonna go away anytime soon, Jackie Bellin. Yes, I mean, we're going, the more that we have here th of these instances, the more we're going to be talking about it. Again, we need to be very, uh, we need to stop being reactionary. We need to talk about it in a reasonable form. Is there, and a, a, lot of, is there a happy medium that the Republicans would look at? 
Well, I think we are at a happy medium. I mean, I think really? the fact that <laughs> I think the fact that we do look at we do have background checks, but we're saying, look, this is our right to carry to bear arms. And in the fact you were talking about the the CEO at Starbucks, right. the fact that he's saying leave your guns at home. Well, I'm definitely not going to go to his store because well, yeah. I, it's my right to carry my protection and, and me, carry let, my gun. Let me address that. And, and Jackie's right. In, in Texas, you have a right to carry your concealed handgun if you want to. But does the owner of a store like Starbucks have the right to say, I don't care about that. This is my establishment. Leave your gun at home. Well, I, I guess now this is property rights versus gun rights, right? I mean, in essence, he has the right to be able to say that I don't want a mass shooting in a Starbucks, so please you leave your guns home when you get a venti, right, <laughs> or a latte. We're going to have to work on Chris's uh, uh, <laughs> you know, vocabulary <laughs> within, within the Starbucks context. But look, uh, you know, from, from, from what Jackie is saying is that we have the right to bear arms. Nobody questions that, right? The question is, how much arms do we want to accumulate amongst us? Even you know, on an aggregate basis, the United States puts more money in its military than any other country, and and now we're like exporting guns to, to drug lords. And we're going to have to leave it right there. I know, Jackie, you want to come back in. We're going to have to leave it right there. We're out of time. Uh, Mustafa talked too long again. <laughs> Sally. Welcome back. So we're going to leave it. <laughs> we'll be back in the next hour. All right. We'll see you in 7 o'clock hour, guys. Thanks right. so much.